guys doing? Yeah, five people. Come on, one more time. How is everybody doing today? All right, let's get started. I'm going to introduce you to some of our killer whales. First up, we have a legend at 53 years old. She's our oldest killer whale and our largest female. In the center of the pool, everyone say hello to Courtney. Next up, we have her very good friend, we have Ikaika. He's going to be doing a jump right here on the side of the pool at 15 years old and 7,000 pounds. Here he comes. And then also, one more time, we have Orchid. She's going to be coming out here. She was actually the first killer whale to ever be born here at this facility. She's going to come out here and say hello to all of you. Feel free to wave back so you can see you guys. Once again, welcome to our Killer Raw venue. As you can see, we're currently undergoing construction right now for our upcoming Orca Encounter. This is going to be a new type of presentation where you, our park guests, can learn about our Killer Whales and how we care for them every day. Just like you, it was my own curiosity about nature and animals that led me to wanting to work here at SeaWorld. Those experiences I had growing up led me to be an animal conservationist and behaviorist today. All right. Let's get started and learn a little bit about our killer whales here. Did you know there's actually 10 different types of killer whales? Scientists refer to these different types as ecotypes. They live in different habitats, pursue different food, and they even uh, live in different types of water and have some different body types. Now you're going to see when the animals swim around, it's a little bit difficult to tell exactly how large these animals are. They have a certain type of coloration that kind of breaks up their size and shape. This is known as the When the animals are swimming around, you're going to notice they have a dorsal fin. This dorsal fin is there for stability and also thermal regulation. The common question we get here is, why do some fins come out of the To understand why this happens, we need to understand the anatomy of the dorsal fin. Inside the dorsal fin, there are no bones or muscles to pull the tip the dorsal fin. So if an animal decides to spend more time at the surface, whether it be at sea world or in the wild, gravity can help encourage that fin to curve to one side. The good thing is that this doesn't affect them in any way, it's purely a set. Now the animals are on the insides of the whale's body. Do have bones and muscle. They actually use this appendage for steering and stopping. There's two over there. Cool fact about the pectoral flippers, if you were to look at an x-ray, and an x-ray of our human hand, they actually look very similar. They do have a uh, upper arm bone, two lower arm bones, and all the finger bones that are inside those pectoral flippers. The tail flips at the bottom of the killer whale. This helps propel the whales through the water. And you're also going to see the white incarnate eye patches that are on the sides of the killer whale's head. A lot of people think their eyes are actually located in those eye patches. Believe it or not, their eyes are actually located at the corners of their mouth, just in front of these eye patches. Some researchers believe that they use these markings, along with the gray saddle patch behind their dorsal fin, they use these markings for social behaviors such as hunting and swimming. One more time, let's hear it for Orchid, Ikaika, and Corky. One of the questions we get here is, do the whales talk to each other? Killer whales and other types of dolphins communicate in a variety of different ways. One way is through vocalizations. Let's listen. Now each type of killer whale in each pod they have their own dialect and their own unique set of calls. Sometimes they also use their bodies to communicate too. Check it out, Porky's going to show you guys how they can communicate. Now a behavior like that is actually a way that they can actually stun their prey. And other times when they're using their bodies, such as like Heika was making a sound on top of the water, they can do this to show excitement, display a little power, or even to get the attention of other whales. So we just learned how the whales communicate with each other, but how do we communicate with them? We actually use hand signals to communicate with our animals. 
This ongoing communication that we have is an important part of building the strong relationships that we have with the whales. And because of these strong bonds, something we're able to do is train husbandry behaviors. Now, husbandry is just a fancy word that means animal care. Anytime the animals are participating in their health care, this is known as a husbandry behavior. So you're going to see over there with Jen and Corky, she's actually uh, laid out on her back there and she's presenting her tail flukes. If you look really carefully on those tail flukes, you're going to notice there's like these uh, kind of like root-like looking things. Those are actually veins and our vet staff can actually obtain a blood sample right from that vein. We check their blood monthly to make sure that we're being proactive with their health. Slide-out behaviors that you'll see are great photo opportunities, but believe it or not, this is how we weigh our animals. We actually weigh our whales weekly to make sure our calves are growing properly and that the whales are staying healthy. The high energy behaviors that you'll see, such as the breaches and the fast swims and the other types of jumps, these are very impressive. But this is also how we make sure that the animals are getting the exercise they need. Killer whales are also very fast swimmers. They can reach speeds up to 28 miles an hour. But what's oh, even more up. impressive is that these animals have the ability to lift their entire bodies up and out of the water. Now food, exercise, and physical from our killer for our veterinarians are very important for their overall well-being, but we want to make sure that the animals' minds are challenged and stimulated too. They need the type of interaction that comes through learning, interaction, and play. So you guys are actually going to get to see a training session right now that we're going to do with our animals. There's a variety of different sessions that we have, such as the uh, husbandry behaviors that you saw before, exercise behaviors, and we also oh, get to get as well. <laughs> <laughs> Educate yourself. So we're actually going to do a learning session. We're going to take a couple minutes. Bye! Bye! See ya! Corky has been pregnant seven times! Woo! Woo! There's more? There's more! ridiculous. People are trying to come here and learn. Now you see, interactions like this are very important for animals, and it's also very important for people to see this as well. These animals do serve as ambassadors to their species. We're able to train our animals, we take care of our animals, and we're also able to train these animals to participate in things such as research. Our animals have actually participated in over nine research projects just last year. And because of the things that we're able to do with our animals, the data that we can collect from our researchers and from our animals, we can apply this type of information to all populations to make sure that all animals live in the ocean are The way that we train our animals is through positive reinforcement and operating conditions. So we bring attention to everything that we want to see from the animals. And if the whales decide that they don't want to participate or if they get it wrong, we just ignore that. Failure is okay. The animals are always living for active lives. It's okay. No. So the way that we're able to teach animals a variety of different things is that we have this whistle that's around our neck. Now this is our way of communicating good jobs to the whales. And when they hear that, they can get a variety of different things, such as fish. Yeah, our animals eat anywhere from 100 to 200 pounds of fish every single day. The animals know they're always going to get their fish, so we have to find other ways to make it rewarding for them. So we have toys, we also have gelatin, we have ice cubes, snowballs, we play with them, we hang out with them. There's lots of different ways to uh, reinforce the animals. You're also going to notice we have these uh, tools here called a target pole. It's this long pole over here that has a little buoy at the end of it. We've conditioned the animals to actually uh, touch whatever uh, body part I'm presenting that to. And this is See, how we can show the animals the different movements we're trying to teach them. And then we also have an underwater towing system over there with Amber. So when she pushes one of those buttons, it actually communicates to the animals. Good job. All right, so we're going to do this uh, learning session with like, Kaika over here. Alright, so this is a new behavior that Ikaika is learning, and he's almost completely done here, and Candace is actually asking him here. So everybody watch Ikaika, he's actually going to be doing like a slow porpoise along the, the perimeter of the pool here. So there he goes. And then everybody listen for that whistle. There it was. Let's give Ikaika a great round of applause. That was awesome.
Alright guys, are you ready to see what these animals are capable of? Yeah. Alright, get loud, cheer. If you see something you like, let the animals know. They will feed off your excitement. Let's go. One more time, that was a kaika, orchid and corgi. These animals are incredible, and we're glad that you came to learn about them today. We hope these animals have inspired you to help take care of their ocean home, because believe it or not, their ocean home is actually facing a lot of different threats. Doing small things such as eating sustainable seafood, picking up trash off the street, or even donating to organizations such as the Cereal Fish Gardens Conservation Fund, which helps animals all around the world. These are small actions that have huge impacts. It's our world, it's our chance, let's make it right. Thank you all so much for coming to visit us, and we hope that you come back later this year to come to our orphanage. Enjoy the rest of your day at SeaWorld.